A reading from the Book of Wisdom. All men were by nature foolish who were in ignorance of God, and from the good things seen did not succeed in knowing him who is, and from studying the works did not discern the artisan. But either fire or wind or the swift air or the circuit of the stars or the mighty water or the luminaries of heaven, the governors of the world, they considered gods. Now if out of joy in their beauty they thought them gods, let them know how far more excellent is the Lord than these. For the original source of beauty fashioned them. Or if they were struck by their might and energy, let them from these things realize how much more powerful is he who made them. For from the greatness and beauty of created things, their original author by analogy is seen. But yet, for these, the blame is less. For they indeed have gone astray, perhaps, though they seek God and wish to find him. For they search busily among his works, but are distracted by what they see, because the things seen are fair. But again, not even these are pardonable. For if they so far succeeded in knowledge that they could speculate about the world, how did they not more quickly find its Lord? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament <laughs> proclaim his handiwork. Day pours out the word to day, and night to night imparts knowledge. The heavens declare the glory of God. Not a word nor a discourse whose voice is not heard. Through all the earth their voice resounds, and to the end of the world their message. The heavens declare the glory of God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day that Noah entered the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Similarly, as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking, buying, selling, planting, building on the day when Lot left Sodom. Fire and brimstone rained from the sky to destroy them all. So it will be when the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, someone who is on the housetop and whose belongings are in the house must not go down to get them. And likewise, one in the field must not return to what was left behind. Remember the wife of Lot. Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it. But whoever loses it will save it. I tell you on that night, there will be two people in one bed and one will be taken and the other left. And there will be two women grinding meal together. One will be taken, the other left. And they said to him in reply, where, Lord? And he said to them, where the body is, there also the vultures will gather. The Gospel of the Lord. What the author of the Book of Wisdom is attempting to get at is what we call arguing from lesser to greater, okay? And he's saying, with all of the beauty and all of the majesty and all of the glory that can be found in the world, how much more the God who made all of it? And so he's condemning or he's criticizing people who don't get to that point by saying basically, you know what? You got stagnant. 
you got involved on one level, got all excited and distracted, and didn't keep progressing in your investigations to come to the maker of all these beautiful things that are distracting you. And that's too bad. The challenge is, go from the lesser to the greater. I'm reading now a book. Yes, it's on my little pad here. And it's by James Martin, who's a Jesuit, and the title of the book is The Jesuit Guide to Almost Everything. And it's really a tap dance through the spiritual exercises. And when he says, one of the things he says here I thought was very... very useful, and I thought I had it right here. There it is. He says, there are moments in our lives when we have experiences that cause us to wonder. And he, this is what he says. Let's look at some examples of quiet, heartfelt moments in our own lives. You're holding an infant, maybe your own, who looks at you with wide open eyes and you're filled with a surprising sense of gratitude or awe and you wonder, where do these powerful feelings come from? I've never felt like this before. You're walking along the beach and as you cast your eyes to the horizon, you're filled with a sense of peace that is all out of proportion to what you expect and you wonder, why am I getting so emotional about the beach? You're in the midst of an encounter with your husband or wife or a girlfriend or boyfriend, and you marvel at your capacity for joy, and you wonder, how can I be so happy? You're out to dinner or with a friend and feel a sudden sense of contentment, and you recognize how lucky you are to be blessed with this friendship, and you wonder, this is an ordinary night. Where did this deep feeling come from? You've finally been able to come to terms with a tragedy in your life, a sickness or a death, and you find yourself consoled by a friend and you're overcome by calm. And you wonder, how is it that I'm finally at peace in the midst of such sadness? All those moments, James Martin says, peace, gratitude, joy, are ways God communicates with us. Ways God communicates with us. And so what he is saying is that we need to take those experiences and go inside with them. Where, do, where does it come from? What is God trying to say to us through these experiences? Now we can just kind of wallow in the experiences themselves and never bother reflecting. But then we're just like the people in the Book of Wisdom that see all the wonderful things in nature and never get beyond that. And what we're asked to do is go beyond, go deeper. Go a little bit more inside. Sort out where these wonderful feelings come from. Sort out where the glory that you see and the beauty that you experience comes from. St. Augustine, back in the fourth century, was really clear on saying that any time you have these kinds of emotional experiences the way James Martin talked about them, or experiences of, of beauty and majesty and glory in nature the way the Book of Wisdom talks about them, Augustine says what's happening is you're tasting God. And that whatever you found in the beach, in the sea, in a friend, in a meal, whatever it happens to be that is of joy there, it comes from the joy that ultimately has God as its source. So when we look at our lives, when we see this kind of goodness in the world or within ourselves in relationships or circumstances, let's, let's be willing to say, okay, Lord, thank you for this experience. Where are you leading me? What are you trying to say for me today? And what I can say back to you then is just thank you. Let us stand and pray.